Hello YouTube, today I'm going to do a quick video on how to connect the HK Pilot Mega 2.7 Master Set from Hobby King. What you get in the box is the flight controller with a case, a GPS with a compass, the u block GPS, a set of telemetry radio, there are two types, the 433 megahertz, which is this one, and there is another one, which is a 915 megahertz. I live in Europe, so the, here the cell phone network uses 900 megahertz, so I chose the 433 megahertz. You also get a power module, which is actually a sensor. That sends uh, that tells you the the current and the 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 voltage. Uh, you also get a the minimum OSD, which is a cool OSD. I like it very much. And cables, small cables. So let's start connecting everything together and see how it works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. I'm going to take the flight controller and there are some things I'd like to say. Usually when you when you take the flight controller there are two jumpers installed. One jumper is here and one is here. Uh, if you use the flight controller with a PC or laptop, so if you connect it directly through the mini, mini USB port to the computer then you have to leave it you have to leave the the jumper installed but if you'd like to use the flight controller with the with the power module then you have to remove the jumper which is this one here and also the other jumper is for the for the GPS external GPS if you want to use the 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 GPS that's inbuilt here then you have to leave the jumper in place but if you'd like to use the external GPS, which is here, then you have to remove the jumper. So once you connect everything together, remove this jumper here and this one here, and you're ready to go. So let's place this. Let's put it here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna connect the power module. You need the cable. Actually, there are two cables that are similar to each other, but one cable has uh, two connectors with six pins in both sides, and that's the correct one. The other one has one one connector has six pins, and the other one has five pins. So you choose you choose the the one with six pins in both sides, and connect it to the power module. like this and then the power module goes here this is the uh, power module part and it's labeled also PM which stands for power module let's connect power module okay it's a bit hard to connect okay there we go the next thing I'm gonna connect is the telemetry radio so we take one of these it doesn't matter which one because you can switch both of them this is a cool thing actually and we will use the cable with three connectors it's already a pre-made one so we put the we plug this connector the end connector to the radio Okay, and then the middle connector to the telemetry port of the flight controller, which is this one here. And the other end goes to the minimum OSD. So you have to be careful about the power wire, the power source. You have to count one, two, three, and then to find the power source pin here also which is one two three from this side so be careful about connecting this 
Yeah. Okay, now let's connect the GPS. So the GPS has two connectors and they are different. So no worry about switching the places because they don't fit to wrong places, wrong ports. So first the GPS port and then second the external compass port. Okay. Now I'm gonna connect the ESC. The ESC goes one side goes to the power module and then the servo wire goes to channel number three on the outputs which is right here and you have also be careful about the signal wire signal is on the inside so the yellow wire in my case but it could be a white wire also goes inside channel three Okay. Now let's go ahead and connect the receiver. I have the receiver here. It is a Farsky D8R2 Plus receiver, and I have flashed another firmware, uh, which is the firmware from from a D8R XP. The reason I've done that is because the D8R2 Plus, which is this one, doesn't have a CPBM output nor a RSSI output, but the D8R XP does. The thing is that these two receivers are the same regarding the hardware, so uh, you can flash the software of the other receiver which has CPBM uh, output and RSSI output to this uh, receiver and you'll get CPBM output on this receiver too. So I've done that and then I have, now I have CPBM output on channel 1 and RSSI uh, output on channel 2. So what, what that means is that uh, with CPBM you can control all the channels with only one wire. So you need only one wire to connect from the receiver to the controller and you'll be able to use all eight channels of the receiver through this one wire only. And the second wire, this wire, the second one is for RSSI, and the third wire is here actually for, for the server that I've installed here. So I'm gonna be using this server to control, to rotate my camera. And another thing to notice is that if you are gonna use if you're going to be using the the CPBM output, then you need to install a jumper here in the out in the inputs. You have to connect the the signal pins of channel two and three. So channel two and channel three, the signal pins must be connected. And then you take the receiver uh, CPBM output, which is channel one, and plug it into channel one of inputs. Be careful about the signal wire inside, always. And I'm not going to connect the RSSI port right now, but I'm going to connect the, the camera servo, which in my case is not, uh, channel 7. I've assigned it to channel 7. Okay. And it looks like everything is in place and ready to power up. Uh, the other thing I would like to say, I would like to add something about the minimum OSD. As you can see, there are some pins installed here. Usually, minimum OSD doesn't come with these pins. I have soldered them, uh, and the reason for doing that is that minimum OSD from HK from Hobby King sometimes comes without the bootloader installed. So you need to install to flash the bootloader, and to do that, you need you're gonna need to solder these pins and you're gonna need to use a USB ASP programmer to burn the bootloader to into the to the minimum OSD which is pretty simple actually you just install this so this pin six pins and if you happen to have the USB ASP from Hobby King the new one with six pins then it fits perfectly the the, the ports the pins match 
each other so you just have to plug it this way so this plastic this plastic must be inside and you're ready to go you flash the bootloader with the IDE uh, Arduino software and then you flash the firmware with FTDI uh, chip and another thing I'd like to say about the, the MinimOSD is that uh, I have soldered here I have connected to two tracks here and here also uh, the reason for doing that is that I I wanted to, to have only one power source from the so the five volts from this side I didn't want to use the power source the 12 volts from this side so connecting soldering here and here lets you lets you uh, power the USB only from this side from 5 volts port I've done that for for, for testing purposes uh, once I get in the field maybe I need to desolder this and this and use 12 volts here as well because of interferences that may be cause or whatever but for now I'm just powering up from this side and everything's okay flashing and loading firmware and and char sets updating char sets and and so on so uh, I don't have goggles yet I've purchased them they are not here so I'm gonna be using a DVD player for connecting things together so let's power up the DVD let's power on and we connect the the screen the output here the first row it stands here V out video out this one is for video in that comes from camera this one is video out that goes to your goggle or screen LCD screen or what I've learned I've had some issues with minimum SD or maybe it's normal I don't know uh, sometimes when I power on the system and the minimum SD is connected it doesn't boot properly pro properly so I disconnect it power on the system and then connect it again and everything works fine so let's go ahead and connect the battery and see how it, everything works okay everything looks good so let's go ahead and power on the system let's connect the battery but first let me turn on the radio radio is in German but I don't know German but I like German so let's go ahead and connect the battery as you can see the flight controller flashes uh, I'm in a basement I don't get GPS lock here so let's go ahead and connect the minimum OSD as I said before you have to be careful about this so 5 volts this side and as you can see on the screen there's data so when I move the flight controller data changes everything works I can control the screens also from my transmitter there are three screens I can change that was the first one this is the second one the third one without data and the first one again I'm using the trainer switch and I have also assigned a part to rotate my camera there's the center and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to connect uh, a cell phone to the other radio telemetry uh, using this radio demo telemetry you can connect your PC or laptop or tablet or cell phone to control the, the, the airplane to <coughs> plan missions and then to execute them it's a pretty cool
feature and uh, in this case I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you how to control how to use the PC but I'm gonna show you how to use a cell phone uh, in the set there's also this cable included which is also called a OTG cable and you can use this to connect to tablet or cell phone the, this radio so let's go ahead and connect the the micro USB port and then there are a few apps to download they're free to download I have some of them and once you connect the cable then the cell phone is going to ask you which app to use I'm, I'm going to use the Droid Planner you can download from Google Play Store it's free and as you can see this is the Droid Planner Let's go ahead and connect. Lost mode return to home. Mode return to home. It says also here R E T L, which means return to lunch. Let's go ahead and change the mode. Let's say circle. Mode circle. As you can see on the screen, it says also circle. Let's go ahead and try another one, like fly by wire A. Mode fly by wire A. It changes there also. And another thing that I've done is that I have done the mods the flight I've, I've programmed the flying mods on my uh, transmitter also <coughs> so let's say this switch I've assigned a Load manual, manual. Load stabilized. stabilized the other switch is for going for waypoint one auto mod Load stabilized. and then Circle. Mode circle. Mode stabilized. As you can see, it changes on the screen also. Mode return to home. Return to lunch. Return to home. Mode stabilized. Stabilize. So guys, that will be all. I thank you very much for watching and see you next time.